Hello, hello, Mike Wardinsky here, and today I've got a great video on how and why you should be using snapshots in Lightroom Classic. But first, don't forget to head over to naturemike.com for how-to articles and reviews, in-field workshops, and private post-processing lessons. All right, so let's jump right in here. If you're a seasoned Lightroom user, you've probably realized by now that there's no way to save a photo in Lightroom. And there's a good reason for that, and that's because Lightroom automatically saves every step of the way. And when you close out the program and open it back up, the photo will look the exact same way as when you left it last. So in order to demonstrate this, I'm gonna go ahead and make a few adjustments to this photo, just some really, really basic edits. Maybe something like that. And I'm gonna open up the History tab and you can see everything that I just did was recorded step by step. Now this is great, but there is one downside. Let's say we wanna go back to maybe the point where we adjusted the whites. And I click on that, you can see the change took effect and I still have all the adjustments that I did above it so I can always bounce back. But I'm gonna go back to the whites real quick. And now let's say we wanna make this image black and white. Watch what happens over here on the left hand side when I switch this image to black and white. You can see we just lost all of the information that was above it. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Command Z on a Mac, Control Z on a PC, or Edit Undo. And you can see I lost all this information above. So if I wanted to save that, I could go ahead and click up here, right where we were, and now I'm gonna go ahead and create a snapshot. This is one of the least used and most valuable features in Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this little plus icon and you can see we got a snapshot name here. By default, it gives you the date and time. Um, you can just hit create if you like that or I can say snapshot one and hit create. And so there we go, we got our date and time plus the text snapshot one afterwards. So no matter what I do here in the history tab now, I can always get back to this point. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that. I'll go back to exposure and we'll create a black and white version. And you can see I lost everything above it, but if I just come back to snapshot, there we go, we have our edits the way we were. Now we still don't have the full history, but we do have those edits. So if I wanna go back to that black and white, I can just go to convert back to my convert black and white and hit the snapshot. I'll call this one BW1, hit create. And now what we can do is we can go back to our first color snapshot. I can create, since this one has more edits in the basic panel, I can go ahead and hit the black and white conversion again and then create another snapshot. I'll call this one BW2, hit create. And now I can compare those two different black and white images. And this is essentially taking up zero space on the hard drive. So this is a way that you can build multiple different edits of a single image. And this is really helpful once you've been staring at a computer screen for a very long time and you've done a lot of edits. It's a nice way to compare photos. In this example, I've got seven different snapshots saved over in the snapshot tab. And as I hover over these, you'll notice that the navigator shows me a preview of each snapshot. And if you wanna see a larger preview, you can simply just click on these. Now this is a really good way to compare edits. Um, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes when you're staring at the screen for a long time, your eyes can kind of become numb. And so it's nice to kind of create snapshots, take a break, walk away from the computer, come back an hour or two later, or even the next day, and kind of bounce around between these snapshots and see which edit looks the best to you. And sometimes the edit that you thought was the best might not be the best one after you give your eyes a chance to take a break and come back the following day. So that's why these snapshots are very useful and I can't recommend using them enough. Now oftentimes I don't give these a name, but there are times that I do. Let's say this is my favorite version and I wanna make sure that I know it's my favorite version. So I can just come over to the name and I will control or right click. I'll choose rename and I can call this one final color edit and hit okay. And you can see the name changed over here in the snapshots window. And then I could continue editing if I want. Maybe come down to calibration, make some adjustments, maybe cool it down a little bit. Give it a little bit more of a 
cool sort of pinkish glow, and I can go ahead and create another snapshot, and I can compare the two. Just a quick note, snapshots are only available in the develop module since that's the only place that you're actually editing the photo. If you're in the library module, they will not be available. So make sure you're in the develop module. And once you start using snapshots, I guarantee that you're gonna love them and start to find creative ways to incorporate them into your workflow and you'll never look back. Thanks again for watching. My name's Mike Wardinsky. Don't forget to check out naturemike.com for more in-field workshops, tutorials, and how-to articles. See you in the next video.